Okay, I'm going to begin with chapter 12 of Sit, Stay, Love. Do we have a deal? Hey, Cecilia, wait up. I turned around when I heard my name. It was the next day after school, and I was walking toward the doors, ready to head to Orphan Paws. I was sort of getting used to the ache of Potato not being there, but all those terrible feelings surged back as I saw Eric Chung jogging down the hall towards me. What's up? I asked, watching as Eric put his hands on his knees, trying to catch his breath. How long have you been following me? A while, he panted, smiling. I've been calling your name, but you didn't seem to hear me. Sorry, I looked down. Here I go again with my colonial ways, I thought, now with an added dose of obliviousness. Don't worry about it, Eric said, an unfamiliar shakiness in his voice. I was so used to his presidential charm and confidence that it disarmed me to see him so uncertain. I have something I want to ask you. He bit his lip. Can I walk you wherever you're going? Sure. We stepped out of the school together. I'm headed that way, I said, pointing in the direction of Wharf and Paws. We both started walking. Is everything okay, I added. My stomach dropped. Had something happened to Potato? Yeah, Eric nodded and ran a hand through his straight black hair. It's just, well, as you know, I want to train Potato to be a show dog. I nodded, biting back my tongue. I didn't want to argue with him again. Well, Potato's proving to be, Eric paused as if searching for the right words, a bit difficult to work with. Difficult? How? I asked, stopping dead in my tracks, even though I knew it was none of my business. I felt protective of Potato and was ready to defend him against all the snobby dog show trainers. For starters, he's very skittish, Eric explained, stopping next to me. He won't really listen to anything I say, and I can barely make eye contact with him the few times he comes out of his crate. There was a frustration in Eric's voice that I didn't recognize. He just doesn't seem to like being around people, even though I've tried every single training technique in the book. So that's where I'd like for you to come in. I looked at him silently, waiting for him to continue. I saw you playing with him at Orphan Paws. He listens to you more than anybody. And I was wondering, his words trailed off. Yes, I asked, my heart pounding. I was wondering if you'd be willing to help me train Potato. Eric finally blurted out, and I know you don't like dog shows and you probably don't even like me, but I really want to prove to my parents that rescue dogs are just as good as the expensive ones we buy from the breeders. Potato is the key to my success. He paused to take a breath, and you're the key to Potato. My head spun. I desperately wanted to see Potato again, but the idea of training him for a, law, a dog show felt so wrong to me. I was about to explain just that to Eric when he spoke again. Dog shows don't normally give huge cash prizes, and the regional one that's coming up is offering $100 to the first place winner. Eric's eyes met mine. If you help me and if Potato wins, the money's yours. Eric's presidential charm seemed to, to have returned, but I could still see a little uncertainty behind his confident, hopeful smile. I found $100. That changed things. I was torn. I hate the idea of dog shows and everything they stood for, and $100 was far from enough to pay my dad with our big financial concerns, but it might be enough to prove a point. This could still be my chance to help out my dad, even in the form of a small dog show prize. More important, I get to spend time with Potato. And who knew? Maybe over the course of these training sessions, I could convince Eric that Potato just wasn't dog show material. So what do you think? Eric's voice broke through my thoughts. Do we have a deal? He stuck out his hand. I hesitated only a moment before I reached out and shook his hand. Deal. Chapter 13, that word we again. Potato's training sessions were to begin on Saturday morning. Lily asked me to sleep over the night before. Dad gave me the okay. I was excited both of the prospect of escaping Aunt Pam's house for a night and seeing Potato even sooner. Also, since Mel had left, I hadn't experienced a single sleepover, so I was really looking forward to that. Mr. Chung picked up me, Lily, and Eric after school in a shiny black car. He was wearing a fancy black suit and sunglasses. He kind of looked like a movie star. Hello, Cecilia, he said to me and shook my hand like I was a grown-up. I tried not to stammer when I said hello back to him. Eric got in the passenger seat and I climbed into the back seat with Lily. I bet you can't wait to see Potato, Lily said. I nodded. I didn't want Lily to think I only wanted to hang out or come over to their house because I get to see Potato. It was a great bonus, but I want to be friends with Lily anyway. As we drove away from school, I felt a rush of nervousness. What if this weird feeling seeing Potato after all this time? What if he didn't remember me? And what if... I then got so upset that I started crying, totally embarrassing myself in front of the Chungs. I tried to push down my worries as we arrived at the Chung Mansion. It seriously was a mansion, a huge white house surrounded by tall hedges. I tried not to gape. Eric opened the front door and a whole pack of dogs came rushing at us, barking happily. There were two chow chows, three corgis, and a chocolate lab. Eric grabbed the collar of the biggest chow chow while Lily skirted out of the way. I stood still, my heart pounding. 
As I finally spotted him in the pack, the tiniest of the bunch, Potato. I shouldn't have worried. As soon as Potato spotted me, he bounded over, barking like crazy and jumping up to my knees. I felt a wave of relief and joy. Hey, buddy, I whispered. I sat down right in the fancy foyer and held my arms out, but the chocolate lab tried to fight his way into my lap first. Sneakers, Mr. Chung laughed. He grabbed the dog and pulled him away. Thank you, I told Mr. Chung. Then I gave Potato a huge hug. The little pup stood up on my legs and kissed my face very thoroughly. Guess he must have missed you, Eric said, looking down at us. If I didn't know better, I think Eric sounded jealous. Potato crawled up onto my lap, just like we used to sit at Orphan Paws, and I kissed his soft ears. He turned around three or four times, making my lap into a bed, then let out a humongous puppy sigh and settled in. I sighed happily as well and finally looked around. The foyer led into a huge living room with an expensive looking rugs and plush couches. Lily was now flopped on one of the couches watching the dogs from a safe distance. The two chow chows came up and sniffed me, one at e each ear. But at Eric's whistle, they sat down. The three corgis in the lab now hung back politely. Can dogs be called polite, I wondered. At Eric's whistle, they too sat at attention. What are their names, I wondered out loud, rubbing Potato's head while he dozed in my lap. The corgis are Loki, Luna, and Baxter. And this little guy is Sneakers, Eric explained patting the lab on the head. The Chow Chows are Scotty and Sulu. I wondered who the Star Trek fan the family was. Nice to meet you guys, I said to the dogs who were at still sitting, and I wouldn't have been surprised if they'd solemnly nodded in agreement. Potato let out a loud snore and I grinned down at him. Well, Lily said to me, springing off the couch and trotting over, now that you've been introduced to the canine members of the Chung family, um, do you want a tour of the house? Sure, I said, although I was reluctant to let go of Potato, Eric must have noticed my expression because he said Potato can come too. Okay, I said, bouncing to my feet with Potato still nestled in my arms. So I added, following Lily and Eric through the living room. Where's the bowling alley? Bowling alley, list. Lily burst out laughing. We don't have a bowling alley. She led me through a large study where Mr. and Mrs. Chung were each seated in front of sleek looking computers. Mrs. Chung waved and called hello to me. I frowned, really? I asked, glancing from a leader. I definitely heard a rumor you had one. A private movie theater, too? I wish, Eric laughed. We do have a pool, though, he said, pointing out the large window to a swimming pool in the backyard. I sighed, thinking that I'd be just glad to have my plain old house back, even though it didn't definitely have a pool or a bowling alley. But it had been my home. We walked by a little cozy room with a love seat, a big armchair, and a whole bunch of fluffy dog beds. Most of the other dogs were in there now, running around. That's the dog's room, Eric explained. They have the run of the house, but that's where they mostly hang out, especially when we're not here. The bed's potatoes, he said, pointing to a new looking little tan and brown bed. It was oval shaped and I swear it almost looked like a potato. Potato had awakened and he was squirming toward his bed. So I kissed the top of his head and reluctantly let him go, watching him trot off into the room. His tail wagged and his tongue hung out of one side of his mouth. I knew I'd come find him later. He looks really good, I said. I was really relieved, but also kind of crushed that Potato seems so comfortable here at the Chung's. Yeah, he's been resting a lot, Eric said. Mom got him a bunch of special food that's good for his stomach and everything, but he's obviously happy to see you. I'm happy too, though it'll be hard to leave, I said, a sad tinting my voice. Eric looked uncomfortable. Hey, I'm sorry. Nothing to be sorry for, I quickly said, turning around to follow Lily up the grand staircase. My interactions with Eric needed to be strictly professional, I decided. If we started discussing what happened with him taking away Potato, I'd get too upset. Lily showed me the upstairs. Her room was bright and decorated with floral wallpaper and pink rugs. She slept in a luxurious canopy bed, but the room was so big that there was an additional bed, a comfy looking twin in the corner. That's where you'll be sleeping, Lily explained. See, Lily explained, pointing. I dropped my bag on the twin bed and Lily suggested we go downstairs and grab some snacks before dinner. See you at dinner, she told Eric as we passed his room, which was next door to Lily's and just as big, but covered in posters of basketball stars. His shelves were lined with sports trophies as well. I swallowed hard, trophies from dog shows. Eric paused outside his door and ran a hand through his hair. Uh, I thought maybe well, I could go down and get snacks with you guys and maybe we could play Uno or something. Lily groaned, seriously, you wanna hang out with us? You always leave me and my friends alone. It might have been my imagination, but Eric's cheeks seemed to turn red. I was just offering to hang, but if you want me to hide in my room or something. Okay, okay, Lily broke in, come on. She started skipping down the stairs. Eric followed and I trailed behind, wondering why my stomach felt so funny. In the gleaming kitchen, Eric and Lily greeted the cook, who was stirring a velvety looking soup on the stove. Fancy, but I was glad when Lily put, pulled a jar of queso from the fridge and Eric grabbed chips from the pantry. At least their snacks weren't fancy. Just my style. We're, 
We ate the snacks in the den and played a few rounds of Uno, which was fun, even with Eric there. Then we had dinner in the formal living room with Mr. and Mrs. Chung, tomato soup, roasted salmon and mashed potatoes, and mango sorbet for dessert, all of which was super yummy. Afterward, Mr. and Mrs. Chung went back to the study, and Lily, Eric, and I went to visit the dogs in the dog room. My heart lifted again in the sight of Potato, who sprang off his dog bed and into my arms as soon as he saw me. The other dogs were sprawled on their beds, sleeping peacefully. Can, can Potato sleep with me tonight, I ventured, hoping I wasn't pushing my luck. Sure, Eric and Lily said at the same time. Whew. We climbed the stairs, me holding tight to Potato. Well, good night, Eric said to me, suddenly formal. Training starts tomorrow morning. Right, I nodded, my stomach falling. I'd forgotten about the training. Eric went to his room and I carried Potato.